In September of 2019, a new Guinness World Record was set for tomatoes. The record for heaviest tomato is now over 9 pounds 10 ounces. That's almost 4.4 kilos. A single tomato as heavy as a pumpkin. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, I'll be sharing some of my favorite tomato stories. It's the early 1930s in the United States, in West Virginia to be specific, and Marshall Biles has an idea. He wants to develop the most delicious tomato that he can. He's not a gardener, he's not a scientist, but he has this idea. And so he buys a few tomato plants, puts them in a circle, and cross-pollinates them, and then saves the seeds, and then plants those seeds and grows more tomato plants. And it takes a number of years, but he develops what he thinks is a delicious tomato. And others think so too. So he sells his plants for a dollar each. And after six years, he has raised $6,000 and pays off his mortgage. The name of that tomato? Mortgage Lifter. You've probably seen it. You may have even grown it. The seed was saved through the Seed Savers Exchange, and it's still available today. I love that story because it's just a guy who grows a tomato plant, and now all of us have the opportunity to grow the same plant. That's just one of the stories from this book that I really love, Epic Tomatoes, and I'll put a link to it below. Epic Tomatoes is written by Craig LeHoulier, who has his own role in the history of the tomato. In 1990, J.D. Green of Tennessee sent Craig a letter with some tomato seeds. But more importantly, he shared the story behind the seeds. Apparently, they were descended from seeds that one of his neighbors received from Cherokee Indians over a hundred years ago. Well, you can guess that Craig was intrigued. I would be. So he planted them in his garden, grew the plants, and then tasted the tomatoes. And they exploded with flavor. And they had a unique color, a really deep, dusky pink that really didn't exist in other tomatoes at the time. So this delicious tomato with this incredible color, Craig named Cherokee Purple. I'm sure you've heard of it. Cherokee purple is one of the most popular tomatoes grown in gardens today. And it started with J.D. Green sharing some seeds, Craig LeHoulier growing them, and then Craig sharing those seeds with Seed Savers Exchange. I've grown the Cherokee purple tomato along with many, many others because I think there are few things better than getting the taste of that fresh tomato at the end of the day. I'm guessing you feel similarly because a few years ago, it was reported that 93% of American gardeners grow tomatoes. It's the favorite garden plant. And I particularly love it when we know the story behind the variety that we're growing. Most often, they're heirloom varieties. And though there is no agreed upon definition of what an heirloom variety is, Generally, it's a variety that goes back many generations, like to the 1930s with the mortgage lifter, or one that can be traced back 100 years to the Cherokee Indians of Tennessee. Regardless of the definition, heirloom tomatoes are all open pollinated. That means you can save the seed and get the exact same plant the next year. What can be better than that? getting seeds once, growing them year after year, and creating your own family history about that tomato. The current Guinness World Record for the tomato plant that has produced the most fruit is over 1,150 pounds. That's more than 520 kilos of tomatoes. 
It was a plant that grew at the Epcot Science Center at Disney World in Florida. Can you imagine a plant that grows enough fruit, tomatoes, to feed hundreds of people? I'm happy with what I can get, but this is definitely motivation for me to grow more. And the tomato is a fruit. Or is it a vegetable? Because we grow it in our vegetable garden. Well, back in 1893, a tomato importer called it a fruit because botanically it is. But he was trying to get away from paying the government taxes because there was a vegetable tariff in place. Well, the government, wanting their money, took him to court. And the case made its way all the way to the United States Supreme Court, where it was decided that as far as tariffs and imports are concerned, the tomato is a vegetable. But for all of us gardeners, we should know as we grow it that it really is a fruit. You may have heard that a couple years ago, salsa became the most popular condiment in the United States. And what was the previous champion? Ketchup. Well, the primary ingredient in both salsa and ketchup is tomatoes. I think the history of how the tomato found its way into our most popular foods is pretty interesting. The tomato actually originated in the Americas a long time ago, but we have no history of that. What we do know is that in the 16th century, Spanish conquistadors brought the tomato back to Europe. It started in Spain and then moved to Italy and then eventually found its way throughout Europe, including England. And what's so incredible is that even though the tomato originated in the Americas, it wasn't until these other nations brought it back to America that we began to understand what it was and use it in our food based on the heritage from those European countries. And it is a bit of a myth that many of the people from hundreds of years ago thought that the tomato was poisonous. It's actually been used as a food for hundreds of years. I really like the story behind the Paul Robeson tomato. Now, Paul Robeson was an African-American actor from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. He may be most famous from his role in the movie Showboat in 1936. You definitely remember him if you've seen that movie. He's the baritone singing, Old Man River. Now, I can't sing and I don't do justice at all to his amazing voice, but he became quite popular and fought for civil rights all around the world including some pro-Soviet meetings that he had in Europe. And because of that, he became quite popular in Soviet Russia. This was a time of deep segregation, and so he wasn't that popular in the United States, but he had quite a following by the Soviets. Well, in the 1990s, a Moscow seed producer introduced to the United States a Russian tomato that was packed with flavor. In fact, there are many that consider the Paul Robeson the best tasting tomato today and had a deep, dark, rich color. So she named it the Paul Robeson. I've grown it. Maybe you have too. If you haven't, consider it. I've shared in recent videos that my favorite tomato is the black creme. I just really like the flavor. The black creme is also a Russian tomato. It comes out of the Crimean region. In fact, the Ukrainian word for Crimea is krim. And so from the Isle of Krim, we get the black creme tomato. It's believed that many soldiers at the end of the Crimean War started bringing back seeds from this wonderful tomato, and it was a officially introduced in the 1990s from the Isle of Krim. There's nothing wrong with Russian tomatoes, especially for gardeners like me that live in cold regions. 
So maybe one reason why I really like the black crim is because it does so well in my area, because I just love the flavor. Another favorite tomato story is actually quite personal. At the Galileo Garden, I grew thousands of tomatoes over the years. And one year in particular, as I had all of the tomato seedlings lined up under the lights, I noticed two plants in particular that were different from all the rest. One of them was actually growing among the black crim tomato seedlings. But what made this one so different was the leaves. Now, you probably are familiar with the way a tomato leaf looks. Well, it's related to potatoes. And so there can be a genetic mutation within the tomato seed that can cause the leaves to look like potato leaves. And so this one plant in particular was supposed to be a black creme tomato, but it had potato leaf shape to it. So I kept that plant separate from all the rest as the season progressed and saved the seed from that plant and then planted it the next year and I got the same type of leaves on those plants. The tomato was a little bit smaller than a black creme, but very similar with great taste and it did extremely well in my region. So I saved the seeds again and had the same results. So I'm attempting to actually create my own variety of tomato as a result of a genetic mutation, an accident. And I've named that tomato plant the Galileo Moon. Now it's too early for me to move too far too fast, but I'm hoping the time will come where like Craig LeHoulier, I can introduce a new variety to Seed Savers Exchange, and maybe long after I'm gone, people will be growing the Galileo moon in their gardens. If you have any questions about these wonderful stories, please let me know and share with me any stories you have about your favorite tomatoes or an interesting heirloom. I'd like to hear about it in the comments below because I think it's the kind of thing we can all be interested in. If you want to see more gardening videos, please subscribe to the Gardener Scott channel. And if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might be interested. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.